morning brothers and sisters is it working okay one more time good morning brothers and sisters morning, let's begin this holy eucharistic celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we are celebrating the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The readings, especially the gospel, invites us to search for that treasure, that most valuable treasure, that is the kingdom of God. And for the times we have been after other things than the kingdom of God, let us make an examination of our life and ask for God's forgiveness and mercy because he is full of compassion. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, bless to me, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And on earth peace to be our the highest. And on earth peace to be Thank you. 
Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
Jesus Christ. Dear friends, am I clearly audible? Sure? Okay. Otherwise, I will use that microphone. Brothers and sisters, today, Jesus narrates three parables. But the summary of the three is the same, that to search for that precious thing, the most valuable thing, that is the kingdom of God. All the parables of Jesus are geared towards making people understand what should be our priority in life. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus tells us, Do not worry about what to eat, what to drink, and what to clothe. First, seek the kingdom of God, and everything will be provided to you. And today in the Gospel, Jesus puts before us these three parables, where people sacrifice everything else in order to gain that precious thing called the kingdom of God. In Texas, a man by name Ailes owned a big ranch. Many years back, when there was drought, when the rains were less, he was not able to take care of the ranch. The grass was drying up. He had sheep. So it was very hard for him to manage his property. And he was depending on the subsidy from the government to feed his sheep and his horses. But one day his wife told him, Why don't we try and check? 
if there is any gas underneath our property. So they call this gas agency and they found that in their own property there was huge amount of gas, billions of gallons. And that is now one of the largest gas sources in the US, in Texas, called Ailes Gas Company. Now, the family owned it, but did not possess it until they knew about it. They always owned the property, but they did not possess the gas until it was taken out, they did not know. I am narrating this because it is compared to the human life. The kingdom of God is within us, but many times we are not aware of it. And then we don't possess it. That's why in the first reading, Solomon, the King Solomon, who was considered a very wise man, when God put before him many things, he didn't want them. He asked only for one grace, that is, for wisdom, to differentiate between right and wrong. Okay, what is the opposite of right? What is the opposite of right? Left. Okay, there was a guy in the seminary who studied with me in India, in Pune. And he used to always make fun of others. So one day, I told him, My dear brother, your brain has two parts. The right and the right, right? All of you have the same two parts, right? All of our brains have the two parts the right and the left. And I told him, in the left part of your brain, nothing is right. In the right part of your brain, nothing is left. So I was just kidding. Jesus, King Solomon asked for this grace, for the grace of wisdom. Wisdom to differentiate between right and wrong. Wisdom is not knowledge. According to the Bible, a wise person is someone who knows the difference between what is changing and what is eternal. A person who knows this difference is called a wise man, not the one who is intellectual. Not the one who owns a lot of things, but the person who is able to differentiate between the temporary and the eternal is considered a wise man in the Bible. We may have so many degrees after our name, but if you do not know what is eternal, namely the kingdom of God, then we are not considered wise, my dear brothers and sisters. That's why. Today, Jesus invites all of us to focus our attention on what is really eternal, that is, the kingdom of God. At the end of our lives, all of us will die one day. And when we meet our Savior, the judge, he is going to ask this. He is not going to ask how many degrees you earned or what car you drove. Or what shoes you wore. Or how many houses you had. But only one question. Did you prepare yourselves to be part of the kingdom of God while on earth? How are we going to face that question? So finally, I like this uh, to say everywhere to a new audience. I don't repeat to the same audience. So, that's kind of completes my homily, okay? 
uh, English is not my first language, right? You can make out, right? But for you, it is English. I have a very simple question. Is there any difference between the two English words complete and finished? Are they opposite words or are they synonymous? Speak out. Are the opposites or the same? How many of you think they are the same? If you don't raise your hand, you have to say the difference between the two. Okay, everybody thinks they are the same, right? Okay, once there was a competition in English and to decide the final winner, this question was asked. What is the difference between these two English words, complete and finished? All the contestants opened their dictionaries to find out the difference, but no dictionary could give the difference because as you all said, they are similar in their meaning. But the guy who was declared the winner of the competition, he said, no, they are not the same. These two words are the opposites. And the difference is this. If you marry the right person, you are complete. If you marry the wrong one, you are finished. <laughs> Have a blessed day in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's all stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God. God from God, light from light. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Coming together God's own children, let us make known to him our prayers and petitions. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, 
God, our loving Father, we put before you our prayers and petitions. We beseech you to grant them if they are according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. my brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God a loving father accept O Lord we pray the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts that through the powerful working of your grace these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without and we acclaim
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and our Archbishop and all the clergy. Remember also brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Joseph and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my life. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Body of Christ. Body of Christ.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O oh Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. My dear friends, my name is Father Tumma. I am a visiting priest from India. And one of your parishioners sitting right here in the front, Marcia Delifield and Larry Delifield, and her sister Rita from California, they have been our family friends for more than 10 years. And they are the reason why I am here today. And I thank them and also the pastor and the associate and Deacon Well for uh, giving this wonderful opportunity to celebrate the sacred mysteries on this Sunday with you. I'll be in the United States for another week before I go back to India on the 7th from Chicago. Thank you and have a blessed Sunday. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.
Thank you. 